Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Usman Sadiq Paracha and today we would be having our lecture number 31 of the subject Applied Quantitative Analysis and Practices. Previously we were having discussion on the various methods which were involved in multiple regression, how we can uh, um, deploy these different methods what are the advantages and disadvantages of these different methods in multiple regression and each method has it's got its own uh, criteria so uh, once we had discussed on that then we also discussed about the various conditions in which uh, these type of regression analysis are required then how to check the assumptions because uh, there's a difference between uh, simple linear regression and uh, multiple regression in this case and uh, that is why it is very important that uh, the assumptions which we have discussed for simple linear regressions there uh, the way of checking those assumptions in multiple regression changes a bit. So we discussed about what would be in the considerations for multiple regression in this case. Then again uh, the equation formulation uh, in multiple regression is also different and uh, how we have to include these different beta values for every separate individual variable which is included in the main equation. So uh, as there are more than one variables involved definitely then uh, the way how they interact with each other, each other and how their result is to be interpreted and this also changes. So uh, based on that uh, this is very vital that uh, multiple regression phenomena is examined from every view in detail because the more the number of variables the more sophisticated the analysis technique becomes. So coming to our present lecture uh, this is again the continuation of the series of explanation for this uh, multiple regression analysis because uh, the way these variables interact with each other in multiple regression and how they have an impact on the dependent variable matters a lot and this sophistication is then explained by many added uh, component analysis within multiple regression analysis which we use in order to check whether our regression analysis is going in the right direction or not. And in that, the most important part is our assumptions and our uh, how basically we go ahead uh, in this case with uh, our analysis. So uh, basically uh, that part is uh, vital in this case. Uh, and one thing which we discussed, the one segment in which we had discussion was outliers and residuals. So in this uh, outlier part and residual analysis part based on these uh, two we also draw our conclusion about the assumptions which are involved in, uh, in the multiple regression and uh, that's why the two parts of multiple regression though are vital. One is that we have to check the assumptions before the regression analysis and the other is we have to again check these assumptions after the regression analysis. Now after the regression analysis part for assumption checking is more critical and again it's more trickier as well because we are totally relying on the residuals and based on these residual analysis we try to check whether our assumptions have been met or not. Again, uh, if the assumptions are not met, then again, we cannot generalize our model. So uh, these residual analysis have got a very strong implication on whether our model is uh, 
generalize to that only specific sample or can we draw any kind of conclusion for the entire population? Obviously in business research our main consideration is that we have uh, to basically generalize our sample findings to our entire population. And in that uh, case, again, we, are, we put a lot of effort to select the proper sample in such a way that our findings are, in other words, generalizable to entire population. But again, sometimes uh, now we select our sample in a very uh, sophisticated manner. Despite that, our regression analysis and assumptions, when they are not met, then we are unable to generalize that sample finding to population. So that basically increases the importance of residual analysis in this case. And that's why we discussed in detail how different residual analysis measures are reported and how each measure has got its own important importance. So in multiple regression, it's not just related to the fact that we are trying to check the overall holistic impact of the residual analysis. In fact, there are many measures which we discussed before in which uh, the impact of a single case on the whole uh, regression phenomena is judged and seen whether that single case is important enough to have a heavier impact on the whole analysis. So uh, based on that again uh, the overall impact as, as well as the impact of a single case is judged separately through different measures which are available to us in residual analysis and they tell us uh, that whether there are any uh, assumptions which are met or not met and also whether uh, uh, we have got outliers in this whole system or not. And again, uh, there is a range of outliers which differs there and that's why in order to track these outliers we have to standardize our residuals as well. So once we standardize them, then again we are following standard rules. So in these standard rules, basically uh, there are different implications for different kind of outliers. And uh, then after discussing that, we took a practical example of a model in an organization and how to uh, judge this model practically and how to run the analysis in SPSS, then again uh, when various results are reported and generated in the software. So when we are running this analysis in the software, how these results are uh, interpreted, how we are to draw the conclusions, what are the different factors which may have a very large impact on our findings. So we just went through uh, all this example of model analysis in this case. So we would just have a brief recap on the previous lecture. So this was basically what was discussed uh, as we are reported unstandardized residuals. So they are measured in the same unit as the outcome variable and again it's very difficult to interpret these unstandardized residuals and uh, we cannot compare them as well. So again in order to tackle this issue we uh, use standardized residuals and when we are standardizing them then our residuals are divided by an estimate of their standard deviation. So once these standardized residuals are generated then it's easy to compare them then again also it's easy to find a benchmark against which we can assess that which residual is small, which is larger. So based on that again we discuss the general rules and in this case it is very much evident that standardized residuals which are basically greater than 3 are a uh, main cause of concern here. So basically it's uh, such a high residual is then 
uh, again uh, listed for overview again and then we have to decide whether to include it or not. Then again we have got certain rules that if we have got more than 1% of all cases with standardized residuals having absolute value greater than 2.5 then we cannot accept the level of error here. And uh, then uh, this such kind of model is not um, to be proper fit of the sample data. Then again, we have got uh, another issue regarding if we have 5% uh, cases with value, absolute value greater than 1.96, then again, we would have to reconsider our model and see whether uh, we should consider our analysis or not. So uh, basically once we are standardizing our residuals, so bec it becomes a bit easier to interpret uh, which residual is accepted and whether we have got higher residuals which would uh, uh, bias our model finding. So basically this is a standard practice in which we first calculate the unstandardized residuals and then we standardize them as well so that we can come to some concrete conclusion. Then we discussed about the uh, studentized residuals in this case which is a bit different from st uh, standardized residuals as uh, studentized residuals give us a more specific precise measure and uh, basically then studentized residuals are preferred in this case. Then our major issue comes with the influential cases, how to detect them. And uh, in this case we have introduced a terminology which is uh, termed as adjusted predicted value which is calculated for each case. Then again, uh, we describe the phenomena because first the computer basically calculates the model with the case and without the new case and then we basically try to see what impact does this whole phenomena has on our analysis. So basically, based on that, we also discussed some new values which are reported in regression variate for example, this DF fit, which is again used in order to judge whether this DF fit basically uh, gives us a correct version of the difference between the original values and uh, the predicted value in this case. So basically, uh, this kind of analysis is very effective in uh, detecting these outliers. Another issue which we discussed was related to the deleted residuals and in this case you can see that uh, deleted residuals again also give us some kind of value of adjusted predicted value and is also used for assessing the outliers in this case. Uh, then we further uh, basically enhance this measure of deleted residual uh, by calculating another t uh, term which is called studentized deleted residual. Again, this deleted residual is divided by standard deviation to give us a standardized value here. So basically these deleted residuals are very useful and uh, they give us some idea of outliers in this case. Coming to another important uh, measure which is used for detecting these influential cases is termed as Cook's distance. And uh, basically, again, this is also measuring the impact of a single case on the model. And in this case, once this value is uh, basically calculated, then values greater than 1 are termed as outliers in this case. So uh, in this matter then once we discussed about these different uh, values which we discussed uh, regarding uh, multiple regression and how to track the outliers in multiple regression then we took a practical model. And in this case, you can very much see on the screen that uh, 
here our uh, uh, different independent variables are selected like training, performance appraisal, career planning, then we have got employee participation and job definition and compensation. So these different independent variables are considered and they are simultaneously impact on a dependent variable is then assessed. Now here you can see that the values basically uh, represent a construct termed as high performance work system. And in this case, uh, we basically made a composite of these different, uh, uh, in, uh, different individual HR practices and this composite impact on dependent variable is then separately assessed. So based on that, we put the values uh, obtained from different questionnaires for uh, these uh, different independent variables. They were assessed and then they were put together using forced entry system. And after inculcating them through forced entry system, we tried to measure their impact on the dependent variable. Now once we run the analysis, uh, Let's say, uh, then uh, let's have a look at the analysis again and this would give us a more clear idea of how we basically perform the analysis. Uh, we just uh, went through the different z-scores and we went to analyze, we went to regression and clicked on linear. Then we selected basically the variables which matter here and uh, from here this is evident that we first selected all the independent variables here from the training to job definition then uh, uh, basically we uh, included them in our list of independent variables. Then we took the z-score of performance and took it as dependent variable and then clicked on statistics here and clicked on R squared chain, descriptives, collinearity diagnostics, Durban Watson, case wise diagnostics, we clicked on confidence interval, we clicked on continue and then clicked on plots. Then likewise we also clicked on the Z predicted value, we clicked on put it and entered it in Y axis and then we plotted Z residuals in X axis here. Similarly, then we clicked on histogram and normal probability plots in order to find out the uh, variates and then we asked the SPSS to produce all partial plots. So we clicked on continue and then we clicked on save. So here as we discussed before that all the relevant residuals can be saved here. So we clicked on standardized, studentized, deleted, studentized, deleted, then we calculated DF beta, DF fit. Then we clicked on Cook's distance and leverage values and then after clicking on continue we went to the options. In options we had to basically mention that at what level value of F we will term the con model significant here. So clicking on continue here we just clicked on OK and uh, then we basically ran the analysis and we discussed and then we noticed that the correlations between uh, these uh, values, uh, between these variables, these independent variables are quite high. So again once we just noticed that we just moved ahead with the rest of the, our analysis and we again discussed that uh, or adjusted R square uh, does basically portray that there is a lot of explanation which these independent variables can do for dependent variable and also that these F values are significant. Now coming here to our coefficients here, we clearly identified that these coefficients are not showing that kind of response which was shown in correlation as well. So once we uh, had known that many values in independent variables are not significant and are showing abnormal values, then we ran through our collinearity diagnostic.
when we see collinearity diagnostic we see that in some variable cases the tolerance level and various inflation factor they are quite high which gave us the concern that basically there is multicollinearity in the independent variables which should not be so. So basically uh, once we went through that then we had a look at the uh, collinearity diagnostics and then we had a look at the charts which did seem pretty normal and then again our PV plots also showed normal values. Uh, based on that again we plotted our scatter plots and our partial regression plot as well and likewise different plots which are produced under partial regression plots were discussed in detail. Now coming to the main issue like uh, we can see that there are some assumptions which are met, some assumptions which are not met. And again we came to know that uh, this high multicollinearity will not help us in regression analysis. So that's why it is highly advocated that once there is, this is proved that there are strong correlations which exist among the independent variables, then it's pretty much vital that we basically use the tool of correlation to find out the real relationship between these values. So we went on ahead to find out the correlation values and again as we proved that there is a problem among correlations within independent variables and this uh, kind of fact cannot be ignored completely in the analysis part. So once uh, uh, this whole uh, analysis is done regarding collinearity, then we look at the residual statistics and then the real thing comes after uh, which we have performed all the relevant uh, analysis. So basically uh, in this whole model again once we are only relied, relying on correlations then basically it may give us some clear picture but also again the regression robust, robust method would have to be ignored. So uh, after going through that uh, we had the discussion about how to interpret these different kind of results, what is the implication, how we have to use it and, and then after going through that the other important aspect then comes is uh, that we let's say try to take another example here uh, but uh, which would address a different aspect of regression here. So going to our slide so here basically uh, the phenomena which we are trying, which would we would be trying to discuss is related to another aspect of regression and that's termed as mediation. Now in mediation basically this is a particular situation when the relationship between any two variables can be explained through a third variable. So there is another variable which is trying to have an impact on this relationship of two. So uh, let's have a look at the more detailed aspect. Here you can see the simple relationship on, on regression. And uh, in this case you can see there's a predictor and then we have got an outcome here. Uh, also then in case of mediated relationship this is pretty much clear that the predictor basically first impacts the mediator and then the mediator basically impacts the outcome. So uh, normally in theoretical aspect this uh, whole uh, theory of mediation has been endorsed by many noted scholars. Uh, but uh, one thing is sure that this mediator basically gives us answer for that specific black box which exists between an independent and dependent variable and in which we have to basically prove that there is a black box between these two variables and we need to find out how exactly things are translated into productivity or any other variable. So in order to have examine the impact of such a phenomena we include the mediator 
and this is the kind of an indirect effect which we try to measure in between the independent and dependent variable. So here basically mediator role is very much critical in explaining any kind of relationship which is uh, just taking two variables in this case. One is predictor and the outcome. So it enhances our understanding of how we came to the position of producing more outcome. So what was the phenomena behind that? How we can interpret that? And this also gives us explanation of many management phenomena which keep on occurring around us but we don't pay heed to any mediator which may not be al allowed here in that workforce premises. So basically this mediator impact is vital in this case and that's why we have considered it. Now how to test the mediation in SPSS? Barrett and Kenny basically explained how to test this mediation phenomena and uh, basically according to their model uh, the first step in this case to first model is that we have to predict the outcome from the predictor variable. So basically there should be a relationship between independent and dependent variable in this case. Second model basically is related to predicting the mediator from the predictor uh, variable. So that means there should be a relationship between the predictor variable and the mediator in this case. Then the third is that the predicting the outcome from both the predictor variable and the mediator. So here basically while predicting the outcome uh, from both the predictor variable and the mediator then the overall impact of the predictor uh, variable will be less in this case. It has to be less so that we can prove whether there is a mediation which exists between these two variables or not. So uh, coming to the details of such a model, there are four conditions involved in this case according to Barron and Kenny. First condition is that the predictor must significantly predict the outcome variable which we have discussed. Second condition is the predictor must significantly predict the mediator also. Then third is that the mediator must significantly predict the outcome variable. And then the fourth is that the predictor variable must predict the outcome variable less strongly in model 3 than in model 1. So these are the four conditions which need to be satisfied while we are testing any kind of model for uh, mediation in this case and normally the main plane justification is not accepted that a single variable is just an independent variable and it is having an impact on dependent variable. Now more emphasis is on to explain the existing phenomena which is there and by explaining an the existing phenomena then there are uh, sub uh, issues, there are sub steps which are involved which basically become the mediator between independent and dependent variables. So uh, in order to uh, test for these we follow Baron Kenny. So it's not easy to uh, basically fulfill all these conditions and uh, uh, every aspect of Baron and Kenny model has to be seen diligently in order to see whether we can basically uh, claim about any kind of mediation involved. And uh, in this case, coming to our limitations, uh, there are issues like that people tend to look for the chain in significance and uh, which can lead to all or nothing thinking and, and that's the, what p-values encourages. So basically uh, there's not very specific benchmark of how much of a reduction is required uh, but we do take a normal uh, guesswork of how to see whether there is a reduction in relationship in this case or not. After this limitation then uh, let's have a look at uh, 
another model which we would consider for mediation purpose and how it will make an impact on the dependent variable using SPSS. So let's take an example here of a model in which we can just assess the phenomena of uh, mediation. We consider the same individual HR practices which we discussed before like training, performance appraisal, then we have got uh, career planning, and we have got uh, employee participation, then we have got uh, job definition, And uh, likewise, uh, basically, these are uh, the different concepts related to different HR practices. In training, we try to assess that whether this HR practice is there in the organization or not. Secondly, how intense it is. Likewise, how we, uh, performance appraisal existence is there in the organization in what form we ask different questions about it we have already discussed the pattern of the questionnaire in this case and how it assesses the level of different HR practices in this case so coming to our uh, another issue regarding career planning again we are concerned with uh, how uh, career planning basically plays an impact in uh, organizational performance. So likewise, we just consider all these uh, independent variables. And uh, we try to find their impact on uh, organizational performance. Now we have already discussed before that uh, there is another concept which exists in theory, theory basically that uh, these practices can be joined together to form a complex system of uh, HR practices and such a system basically is termed as high performance work system. So. Uh, basically making the composite of such a system here we can say that all these practices are represented as high performance workforce system now high performance work system basically in combination of all these practices plays a major role in improving the organization productivity that's what the theory implies. However, the issue is that there's another argument regarding this, that this impact is not a direct impact. And there are various phenomena which are involved in within these two relationships, in between these two variables. So direct impact is not there. We have to then fill this black box between this independent and dependent variable and we have to judge that uh, how can we explain the conversion of this high performance work system into greater organizational productivity. So in this case, uh, definitely the theory explains this impact in a more better manner and uh, one theoretical angle does explain that this high performance work system does not directly impact the organizational productivity but in fact this high performance work system basically first enhances the organizational commitment of an employee so we can say 
that this high performance work system first impacts the organizational commitment of an employee towards the organization and then after this this uh, leads to organizational performance so basically the relationship direct relationship between high performance work system and organizational performance is explained by another variable in between them which is termed as a mediator and this mediator explains the phenomena more clearly and tells us how it is possible to that this conversion of high performance work system uh, takes place into organizational performance so basically uh, in this case as we have discussed before that in mediation basically we have to explain the impact of a third variable within this phenomena which is involving this independent and dependent variable case so here basically once we have gone through this uh, there's another issue uh, that uh, we have already uh, discussed this matter in previous slide and you can see that uh, basically in previous slide phenomena this uh, whole uh, third variable impact was discussed in detail now just having a look at uh, how to measure this organizational commitment and how this mediator looks like in a questionnaire we can have a look at that so going to this uh, questionnaire and having a look at it we can see that this questionnaire is there in which basically we discussed about how we measured the training in a school and how different questions were posed to the respondents in that specific school and uh, after going through different these questions the participant has to take on the relevant option from one to five depending upon the extent to, my, uh, to which the respondent is agreeing or not agreeing with the statement here so we enlisted all these HR practices as we have discussed before and uh, likewise also uh, we enlisted after going through these six uh, HR practices we enlisted that important mediator which we have discussed before and this is termed as the organizational commitment and by organizational commitment we mean that how uh, an organization commitment uh, I mean uh, how employee is basically how much is uh, committed to the organization so basically this is explained by this construct termed as organization commitment and again this construct is measured through these uh, questions like uh, I would be very happy to spend the rest of my career in this organization so basically this relates to the feelings and the attitude of the employee towards it, his organization and basically these different questions mirror those different dimensions of the belongingness of uh, employee towards the organization so here you will see all these different questions regarding that for example another is uh, stating I enjoy discussing my school with people outside it then third is I really feel as if this school problems are my own and uh, fourth is like I think I could not easily become as attached to another school as I am to this one fifth is I feel like a member of the family at this school and six like I feel emotionally attached to this school so basically all these questions they measure the level of commitment which employee may have towards the organization so once we have captured this belongingness and this commitment of an employee towards its organization then we can basically convert it into a single construct and then we can use it to test this whole construct as a mediator here.
So, coming to the point here, uh, then the, our next issue is how to test this whole model which we discussed here in this uh, power slide that how we have to uh, basically test this model and this vital model here in SPSS. So we will just uh, run it in SPSS. So coming to the SPSS part, let's go to SPSS software and uh, here you can see a file which is open in which we have got a uh, group of variables which indicate the z-score of these independent variables like training, performance appraisal, career planning, employee participation, job definition and uh, then we have also calculated the composite of all these five uh, uh, HR practices named as high performance work systems and then we have got another variable which is termed as effective commitment and here basically the effective commitment means that this is the dimension which we are measuring uh, through uh, which is also named as organizational commitment. So don't uh, get confused with the effective commitment with organizational commitment. They are termed as one and the same thing. So. Once we have uh, calculated these variables and we have uh, basically uh, named these variables with uh, these names as you can see here. As uh, we have already discussed that in multiple regression we have to calculate the z-score because we want to avoid the multicollinearity. So one step uh, which is beneficial to us in order to reduce the multicollinearity is uh, like uh, calculating the z-scores of all the independent and dependent variables and then run them for analysis. So basically this step uh, does help us in reducing the multicollinearity. So here basically now we are more concerned with our composite which is high performance work system and our mediator which is organizational commitment here and again our performance of school which is represented by ZPERF11. Now uh, turning to the analysis part, so let's click on analyze and click on regression and click on linear. So we click on all these values which have already been selected before and we deselect them. And uh, we let's keep the dependent variable as always. Now the first thing uh, which you might remember in uh, testing the mediator phenomena and that is the first condition for Barron and Kenny and that is that there should be a relationship between the predictor and the outcome variable. So here the outcome variable is organizational performance and the predictor here is the high performance work system. So let's see, clicking on uh, high performance work system and putting it in independent variable. Then we can click on statistics and we can see that all the relevant measures which we require are selected here. And uh, we click on continue, we click on plots. Again all the relevant measures have been selected. Clicking on save we have asked for all the relevant residuals which we require for testing of outliers. We have also selected them. So it's all right. Then we click on options. Again, we are using the probability of F as 0 0.05 which is entry level. We click on continue. Then here again in statistics we would like to make the amendment in which the case wise diagnostics for outliers are reduced to two standard deviations here and we click on continue. Now let's have a look whether the predictor has the uh, relationship with the outcome variable or not. So we click on OK and here we can see that 
the regression analysis has been reported and we can see the correlations which are reported here. Now the correlation between uh, the performance of school and the high performance work system is 0 0.77. So this is quite encouraging here. Also you can see in the model summary the adjusted R square is 0 0.599. Again, the value of F is significant. So, Durbin-Watson is near 2, so we can say there is no autocorrelation. Coming to the ANOVA table, it is very much evident that uh, the regression vary, uh, value is quite high as compared to residual. So, it does explain the high value of adjusted R square, which is justifiable. And also, this model is significant, which is shown in the ANOVA table as well and the significance value is less than 0 0.05. Coming to the coefficients here, <coughs> let's have a look. We can see that the unstandardized coefficients here are 0 0.77 and the standardized coefficients are also 0 0.77 because we are dealing with only one variable here for now uh, as independent variable. So this variable is termed as significant here. So. Coming to the collinearity diagnostics, they are again quite ideal, so we don't need to budge on that one. Also is the case with uh, collinearity diagnostic. Again, you can see there is one case, case number one, in which there is very high residual which is reported and also in case of case 24. So after then we have a look at the charts where to see if the residual analysis are satisfactory or not and here you can see that there is a kind of deviation from the predicted line and still residual regression analysis is robust enough to tackle such kind of deviation in such kind of analysis. Coming to the scatter plots again this is pretty much evident that the, uh, to some extent the uh, uh, the assumptions are satisfied here. Now this first step does prove here that there is a positive relationship between the predictor and the outcome variable. So this is pretty much evident. So our first condition for in case of Barron and Kenny model is justified. Coming to the second condition here in which this is termed as necessary that the predictor value should predict and should have a relationship with the mediator. So coming to the regression and clicking on linear, here now the mediator would get changed and we take our uh, mediator as dependent variable here. So our mediator would be uh, ZAC which represents organizational commitment and we are trying to find the impact of the predictor on the mediator here. Rest of the options remain the same. We click on OK. <coughs> so let's have a look at the results. Now from correlation this is pretty much evident that there is a positive relationship between predictor and uh, dependent variable. Now here the value is 0 0.764. Again this is encouraging. Coming to the model here, this is pretty much sure that uh, the adjusted R square is 58. So basically our predictor is counting for 58 percent variance in mediator and uh, F value is significant here as well. So this does prove that uh, there is a positive relationship which is existing between the predictor and the mediator. And uh, this uh, regression table with uh, ANOVA basically, this also predicts that the regression value is higher than the residual, which does explain the high value of adjusted R square here as well, which is significant. So basically, based on that, we can say that the uh, coefficients here are also uh, uh, reported and in this case the standardized coefficients are given as 0 0.764 and which is also significant again when we are using a single variable as a, a predictor to check its impact on dependent variables then 
the value of standardized coefficient and the r square remains the same round about or r in other words so uh, coming to the collinearity diagnostics there's mu not much of a sense here to check for that and again in this case you can see that the standardized is well for case 1 is kind of abnormal and also for case 46 but overall our results are kind of satisfactory coming to histogram here again this curve shows a kind of a normality so uh, and also uh, though the observed values are kind of deviating from the predicted values but still these values can be termed as satisfactory here the scatter plot also does not show much of a pattern which exists here so again we can say that this kind of relationship also satisfies the condition of homoscedasticity then coming to this whole model we come to the same conclusion that yes the second condition for the mediation phenomena has now been justified and in this case this is pretty much evident that the predictor has got significant relationship with the mediator as well so now we have to test for the third condition in which we have to test whether there is a relationship between the mediator and outcome variable so for testing the third condition we click on analyze we go to regression and click on linear here now the dependent variable will get changed and we would put our uh, z performance as dependent and here as independent our mediator value of z a c will be placed here so we click on ok so coming to the results here again we can see that there is very high correlation here reported as 0.901 here between the mediator and the uh, dependent variable now model summary also shows that the adjusted r square is 0 0.80 that means that predictor like which is the mediator here is accounting for 80 percent variance independent variable again in ANOVA table it is pretty much evident that the regression value is quite high as compared to residuals and significant as well so basically we can take this whole ANOVA table uh, showing that R square value is significant coming to the coefficients the values would remain the same and they are significant as well coming to case wise diagnostics again there are only two to three values which are abnormal but now for now we can just uh, ignore these high values and then we have a look at the histogram and uh, the PV plotting as well again um, the robustness of regression analysis can ignore such uh, small deviations from the predicted value so we can ignore it here there is some kind of a pattern which is showing but not too clear to that much extent so we can say that to some extent the values are being justified for the homoscedasticity and independence of errors here now here based on this uh, analysis this is pretty much evident that the third condition basically which states that there should be a notable relationship between the mediator and the outcome variable is now justified now the last condition is that now once we include the independent variable here uh, basically in uh, this mediator model in this case then the overall impact of the independent variable should become less so let's have a look at the testing of our fourth condition we click on analyze then we click on regression and click on linear now in this case we have to follow the hierarchical regression because we have to go stepwise so in first step we will try to test for the relationship between the mediator and the dependent variable and in the next block uh, we have to check that if we include the independent variable then what impact would it have on the overall model so uh, just having a look at uh, this uh, independent variable which we include here so we click on OK 
Okay. And uh, now we have got two models. And as this is very much evident from the correlation table that there's significant relationship between these two variables. And uh, these models clearly depict that uh, in first model, adjusted R square was 0 0.809. In second model, this must be noticed that R square, which is increased to some extent, which is a healthy sign because that says that when we include the impact of mediator in the phenomena, the overall variance accounted for by the independent variable is increased and which naturally should be increased. Also again in second model the value of f is significant which again shows that the model is significant as well. The respective regression variates and their calculation shows that f value is significant and regression values are greater than residuals as well. Now here the coefficients need to be seen very carefully. Now if we have a look at this thing, uh, let's have a look that in first model when we just uh, uh, tested the impact of mediator with the dependent variable, the standardized coefficient was 0 0.901. Again in second model this effect is decreased as is evident from effective commitment value which is 0.738, it has gone down. Also, now we have to compare the independent variable uh, value. Here we can see that it is 0 0.213. Now we have to look at the value of independent variable when it was independently tested only with relationship with the predicted value, uh, variable. Now here keep in mind that our standardized coefficient for the independent variable with the dependent is 0.213. So let's compare it with our previous regression analysis which we did for testing of independent variable and dependent variable and see what was the coefficient there. So going upward in order to see for that relationship we can pretty much see what's the relationship here. Uh, so here in this model you can very much see here. Uh, in this case you can see that the dependent variable up above with uh, uh, dependent variable here is pretty much evident that uh, the independent variable of high performance work system is uh, having a significant value of 0.777. This is the standardized coefficient reported when we are considering the performance of school as dependent variable. Now comparing it with uh, the basically um, the standardized coefficient which we again calculated with the inclusion of mediator, you must have noticed that that standardized coefficient has been reduced from 0.777 to 0.213. That means that the mediator is playing some role in explaining our mediation phenomena. So this is the condition here as you can see now this is our uh, um, original uh, last regression analysis test which we ran and here you can see that the standardized coefficient is 0.213 which has been reduced to a great extent. Now this basically does prove that basically there is a mediation phenomenon which exists and this is how we basically run the mediation analysis in SPSS. I hope this is understandable to you here in this case. So in today's lecture, we basically uh, had a discussion on what is the phenomenon of mediation and how this is uh, practically available in uh, our models and how we test it, how mediation is tested through multiple regression and how we can use SPSS to test mediation in this case. So uh, basically this mediation phenomena 
uh, explains, uh, helps us in explaining the process which is involved in the conversion of independent variable to dependent variable and also it explains in detail how uh, the processes are working behind the relationship which we are trying to observe. So that's why in mediation phenomena we are in fact trying to find out the impact of the third variable in between the relationship between the standard two variables which we are testing. So we took a practical example here today of HR practices and how their composite impact on the organizational performance was tested through regression and how Barron and Kenny model uh, is used and what are the conditions according to them which should be used for testing mediation. So once we have gone through that, we discussed in detail how we can test this model in this uh, practical model which we discussed in detail. So I hope this was understandable to you. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.